what have I done? This is really bad. This video is going to determine if I should continue painting or not. And I'm going to let you guys to decide. The story involves two Bangladeshi fishermen, Madhur and Ahir. The two of them were partners in fishing, and they had a small boat together, which they always used to go to the river to catch fish. Madhur and Ahir were always aware that the river is also known for tigers. They spotted a few tigers on the riverbanks and swam in the waters. Still, they are always lucky to avoid danger and get away safely. Until one day, the two of them were fishing at their usual spot. Unfortunately, there were little to no fish in the area. Ahir suggested they should head back and go fishing another day. But Madhur demanded they continue fishing, as this would affect their business. Ahir agreed and decided to go to an area they usually don't visit. Luckily, they caught more than a few fish and headed back immediately when Madhur asked if they could take a quick rest at the boat. Ahir scanned the area for potential dangers, such as crocodiles or tigers, but found none. Madhur then decided to take a little nap as Ahir stood guard. After a short while, Madhur was still sleeping when Ahir noticed something strange about the water. The waters were calm just a while ago, and now it looked like something was moving underneath. Ahir thought it was just a crocodile passing by, so he sat still and didn't move a muscle. He observed the waters and saw it was calm again, which relieved him for a brief moment. To his surprise, an angry tiger suddenly sprung up from the water and tried to lash onto the boat. Madhur immediately woke up to the sudden attack and was surprised to see a tiger trying to thrash Ahir with its front paw. Ahir tried his best to shrug the tiger off his body and pleaded for Madhur to start the boat's engine already. Madhur started the boat and he grabbed a paddle and began to hit the side of the boat to scare the tiger away. The tiger was so alarmed by the boat's engine and paddle that it swam away as soon as the boat began to move ahead. Ahir heaved a sigh of relief upon getting away from the tiger. Madhur decided to check on Ahir and saw that the tiger attack caused minor cuts and lacerations on his arms and hands. The two of them promised never to return to that area again. story follows an explorer named Ethan Cole on his trip to the Sundarbans to film a documentary about the villages situated within the riverbanks and forests. He stumbled upon Joimani village in Pashur, a river bordering the forest. Ethan decided to spend a few days in the small village with his team of two other explorers, Annie and Jonathan. They got along with the village residents to learn more about their lifestyle, way of living, habits, and everyday activities for the documentary. This time, Ethan wanted to learn how the people in the village hunt for food. One villager named Faraj decided to take Ethan, Annie, and Jonathan to the nearby forest to show them how the Joimani villagers hunt for food. Ethan agreed as the four embarked on a journey to the woods to start hunting. Ethan noticed that Faraj had attached a wooden torch to his back and asked why he had to bring a torch if it was still morning. Faraj told them that he always carries a wooden torch to scare off potential enemies in the wild. The three explorers got curious about what enemies Faraj was talking about, but they just decided to continue following him around the forest. Their hunt was just as peaceful and fascinating, as they suddenly heard noises around them. Faraj, being the one in front, signaled that the three of them should stay still and quiet as he said so. Ethan, Annie, and Jonathan did as Faraj had told them. A tiger walked out of the bushes, staring at the four of them. Faraj grabbed the wooden torch from his back and asked Ethan if he had any matches or anything that could light up the torch. He then handed it to Faraj to light up the torch. This is to scare away the tiger. You three should just stay calm, Faraj told them as they slowly walked backwards while the tiger moved forward in their direction. The tiger started growling aggressively. Faraj's hands were shaking. As the tiger was about to jump and attack Faraj, he successfully lit up the wooden torch using the lighter. He swayed it in front of the tiger. The tiger was startled by the fire and hesitant to go near Faraj and the explorers. Every time it tried to charge them, Faraj sways the torch closer to scare it away, and the tiger will terrifyingly resist. After a few moments, Faraj successfully scared the tiger away, and the four returned to the village. 
Still in shock, Ethan was amazed and scared by what he had just encountered in the forest earlier. They wouldn't have made it out of the forest unharmed if it weren't for Farage's courageousness and wooden torch. Today's story takes us to Sapura National Park, a tiger reserve located in the Hoshangabad district of Pradesh in India. With its rugged terrain, sandstone peaks, gorges, ravines, and forests, the mix of terrain and biodiversity makes the park a truly remarkable spot for tourists, drawing thousands of visitors each year. Those who wish to experience India in style would be in for a treat if they chose this park. However, for one lone hiker, he would get a little too close to the wildlife and would realize that the big cats of India are not to be trifled with. Joseph Mfone was a Malawian native who spent his time traveling around the world, looking for the best spots and sites for his travel blog. He believed himself to have a private connection with nature and found that a lot of animals took a strange liking to him. His most popular story was when he had met with a wild cobra and managed to get the creature to leave him alone by singing to it. His latest location was Satpura National Park. He had come to see the elephants in hopes that he would connect with them. Once he arrived at the park, Joseph spent a few hours talking with a local park guide learning what he could see and do. While he didn't need guides for when he went out into strange lands, he did his homework and made sure he knew what he was walking into. After learning everything he could about the park, he found a hotel and planned his route the next day before heading off to bed for the night. By dawn, he headed out, taking one of the more popular trails. He knew that during the day, the path would be filled with tourists so he left early to beat the rush. After half an hour of hiking, he found the elephants. They were all in a corner where they had spent the night staying close to a small pond. From a distance, Joseph watched with keen interest. He spotted some of the small calves with their mothers. They trotted around, spraying each other with water from the pond, which they rushed into, took up water with their trunks, and then sprayed up in the air. Joseph was tempted to get closer, but he knew that wouldn't be the best move. Mothers were protective of their children, and if one elephant charged him, the entire herd would come after him. So he watched them from a distance, taking photos and making videos, which he would later use for his blog. Two and a half hours later, he left them and continued making his way deeper into the reserve. As he moved through the trees, he saw flying squirrels moving from tree to tree as he hiked down the path, disturbing the creatures. From a distance, a spotted deer turned and made eye contact with him before turning back to run off. Joseph took a drink of his water as he realized he had come to the far end of the trail and was now venturing into parts of the park which were rarely visited by tourists. He had gone off the trails and was looking for what else he could find. A hornbill flew overhead, going so low that he could feel the wind from the wings of the bird on his hair. He smiled up at it as it flew away. He walked out to the top of a hill and took in a wonderful view of the entire reserve. Taking a quick break to pee, he turned back and decided to start heading home. Knowing that he had a long trek ahead of him, and would most likely get back to the hotel just before sundown. As he walked through the jungle, he heard a sound behind him and turned back. It had been a loud snap, like a twig being broken under a heavy weight. Just as he turned to look, he saw the orange and black blur of fur rushing right at him. Joseph reacted quickly and jumped to the side as the tiger missed him by mere inches. The large beast hit the ground and turned instantly. For something which weighed over 500 pounds, it was incredibly nimble and managed to turn on a dime like a small house cat. Joseph took off running, getting a head start on the creature. The tiger had smelled him long ago, a smell which it was familiar with. It had seen humans before. Several of them walked the path and sometimes they would see the tiger as well. 
But this human had walked into the tiger's territory and marked it. Joseph had marked the tiger's territory as his own, and the beast was not going down without a fight. It was going to take down the man who believed he could take what the animal owned. Alright, so I think that wasn't so bad. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this.